Hello, I am back for the making and cutting of Owlets and Soap. So this one here is finished. It has black eyed beans on the top and it has rustle clay in the base and activated charcoal for a black swirl. Um, it's got essential oils and fragrance in this one. So it has a cardamom fragrance, which is very musky and warm. And then there's essential oils of coriander, sage, cinnamon, and orange. So it's a very autumnal, your typical autumn scent, but with a little something extra. It's really earthy and warm and yeah, cozy. So this one, I again did a 25% water discount and on the top, normally these would be a lot more sort of uh, textured, but I'd left my batter and left the soap too long again. I made the same mistake as I did with the last soap is getting used to a 25% water discount as opposed to a 50. Um, with the 50, I seem to just have that few minutes longer to texture the top. I don't know why that is. You would think that wa the water amount would make it more fluid, but it um, only seems to be the case when you are pouring and swirling, but when you leave it to get to the texture you need before you peak or you know do a textured top, um, I normally have a bit longer to play with when I've done a bigger discount. So I don't know why that is. It's just, um, it's just the way it is. So again, this one, yeah, I, um, I kind of cocked up a bit, but it's come out okay. So we're gonna see what it looks like inside. Um, but before we do that, <laughs> you can stay tuned to see how I made it. Okay. Okay. Put these to the side a second. Okay, so. I'm not going to stick around that anymore because it doesn't need it now. I'm just going to pour off the black or the portion for the black and then put the rustle into the base. So the rustle is a Moroccan clay. So I just want a little black for a swirl. So there's my charcoal there. I'm just going to pop that onto the top and then we'll stick blend the rustle and then we'll come back and do the charcoal after. So here's my rustle. I'm just going to pop that in the base there. Stick blend that up again. so ever so slightly not very much at all it's just the orange oil is very dark but 
it won't really put any colour into this soap. So this one is just uh, this Russell base with the black swirl from the charcoal and then it has black eyed peas or black eyed beans that I put on the top to here. And that be it. This is such a favourite with my customers. Every year they're like, oh, let's end, oh, let's end. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, I will make it. So today is the day, the day after the Queen's funeral. So I thought I'll make the soaps in the morning and then this afternoon I will be packing orders. So I like to make stuff in the morning so it's out of the way. Because if I start packing orders and then I'm still doing that in the afternoon, nothing gets made. So I'm having to change my little strategy so that I make sure that I get stuff made, go and have some lunch and then come back and then pack orders. Because packing orders takes less time than the creating does. So I'm going to pour this soap. Keeping it nice and fluid. Trying to get it as even as I can. It's not too bad. I think there's a. I think this table is um, slightly going off to one side, so I might have to look at that. Right, 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 right. Okay, let's do a little texture. I've left this too long as well, for goodness sake. Oh, I annoy myself. Honestly. Goodness. I am incredibly annoyed at myself now. Really annoyed. <sighs> what an idiot. touching it and I'm going to get my black eyed beans on well I know I haven't made soap for a few weeks but I didn't think I was going to be this shoddy today I really didn't I'm really really annoyed but we'll keep the videos coming because you can see what it's like when you have an off day as well as when you have a good day probably be fine when it's good but it's just um, you know and you haven't done things to plan and it's just so annoying this one's such an easy soap to make as well it's such a simple 
pour, you know, it's just pour the base, pour the black, texture the top a little bit and put a black eyed bean on the top and I've left it too long so I couldn't get my texture right. You do beat yourself up when things don't go according to your own satisfaction. Like other people aren't going to notice this, I shouldn't think. Once these are cutting on the website, it would just not be a thing. But to me it is. Trials of a soap maker who wants to get everything perfect. <laughs> doesn't always happen. I think it's because I am working with a lesser water discount and sometimes, believe it or not, that can make soap thick and faster. When I first started doing the 50% the, the water discount, so taking half of the water out, um, I was really amazed at how much time I had to play, actually. Um, so yeah, upping the water slightly is obviously what the issue is here. I've got one more to make. It should be quite a simple soap, but I will uh, show you the process anyway. So that is Owlet's End. I should have put you up higher for that, putting those on, but never mind. Looks like this. It looks fine, but it's just not what I was planning. Okay, I'll see you for the cut. Okay, I'm just gonna unmold. If you want to know where I get all the molds from, if you're a new subscriber, then all links are listed in the description below. That's to all my recipes via Etsy, and then all the links to equipment and moulds and all kinds of stuff. Suppliers, it's all in the description below. If you have a look there, you'll find pretty much what you're looking for. I'm trying to sort of include everything that I think everybody will want to know. I'm just going to trim off the edge. Just makes it easier when I come to cut and finish individual bars if this one main, the two edges are already trimmed. It just makes it nicer for the end user when they use the bar first. It's nice not to have sharp edges against the skin. So I like to trim off the excess and have a nice chamfered edge. Just got you aimed a little differently there. Um, I just need to chop off that end. I've got you aimed above so you can see maybe a bit more when I get into the middle of the soap. I'll move up there. Okay. A little playing around. I just want to do a different angle so you can just see a different view. Let me see how that goes. So there's the centre. That's just the first cut. I've just taken off the edge because when I put my black eyed beans on I sort of um, measured it so that it would hit the middle. That's a different swirl to normally. This one doesn't normally come out quite as swirled as this, so that's quite nice. And I can tell I've got a little bit of soda ash. So that water discount, that's why. It, I uh, normally do the larger water discount to eliminate soda ash. And now that I've upped it a little bit, I'm getting a teensy tiny bit, but it's a lot easier to cut through the soap on this cutter when I've done that disc, the 25% instead of the, I, it's not always 40, um, 50, I normally do about a 40, 35 to 40% 40 water discount. I've just done 50 on 
videos so I'm sort of become a bit known for doing a 50% discount on the water and again it just means I'm halving the water it's just 50% taken out of the required amount of water as per a regular default recipe on soap calc I'm just halving the water and taking it away People get confused and think I'm on about doing a 50-50 ratio with lye and water. And I'm, that's not what I'm saying at all. It's just a water discount. So it's nothing to do with the lye. <laughs> you still need the same amount of lye to make the batch of soap that you would normally make with the amount of oils that you're using. It's nothing to do with the lye at all. It's just simply the water. That's all. Just clearing that up because I get so many questions about people getting confused. And I, I don't understand why people get confused. But they do. So that's by doing a 50% water discount, I'm just taking 50% half out. That's it. I think sometimes we can all be uh, accused of overcomplicating things, and it's not the case at all. <laughs> so after the uh, Queen's funeral on the weekend, on Monday actually, I've been watching The Crown again on Netflix and I've watched it I think once all the way through but because there was such a gap between the series I feel like I've uh, not seen it for a long time because there was quite a long wait for the last series I believe so I thought I'll give it a go again because it's actually a really good series the, f the first one especially, when she's young, before she becomes queen, it's, and when she does become queen, there's, it's, uh, it's brilliant. It's like watching an epic movie, so yeah, really, really good. So I'm enjoying watching that. Other things I've been watching, I can't really remember, I've been, more, I've been reading recently, more so than watching Netflix and films and things like that. Um, there's been a few things I've watched, but... Really, I've been reading my books, and at the moment I'm reading The Paper Palace. I can't remember who it's by, but it's called The Paper Palace. And that's quite a story. <laughs> and then I've just put, um, I've just bought another book last night, The Last House on the Street, I think it's called. But that'll come after I finish this current one. So yeah, I've been enjoying reading my books lately. Um, I've just had a, a nasty week last week with Matt at home with Covid and luckily, I don't know how I've managed it but I feel like I've dodged a bullet, I didn't get it and I looked after him but I mean we were very very careful to not be in the same room and to not sleep obviously in the same bedroom, every time he used the bathroom I would wait half an hour to an hour while, um, after he'd been in there and then we'd be spraying everything down. So we were quite vigilant in our approach to this, but um, oh God, he was poorly. He was really poorly. And he had a really, really bad throat with this particular strain of Omicron. It seemed to hit his throat. And then I was watching some videos. Well, I found a video on YouTube just to see how long it was gonna last, you know, like with that throat pain. And um, there were so many comments on this one girl's video about the throat pain and just saying it's just the worst. And one guy had said if he could have died for seven days and then come back, he would, he would have done. And honestly, Matt was so, so poorly with his throat. He looked terrible. Um, just to the point where he just couldn't sleep at all. It was like he was just getting no rest. And now he's very, very heavily fatigued and um, he's fine now, but he's just really, really tired. So it really knocks the body about. But I think he was quite run down. We'd been away, we'd had a week off. We'd been down to Cornwall for a couple of nights, but we only went for two nights. We should have had like a longer time down there. Um, but we didn't. And then he came back and he was skateboarding and we were going to the gym. And I think he just overdid it and he got sick. It happens, you know. But luckily, I, I was so frightened, and you, know, you know, I was like scared to death of blooming COVID when it all started to happen. I was not in a good place in my mind at all. It was frightening me. Um, so I was really paranoid. <laughs> but I did my tests and just uh, kept on top of it and thought, okay, well, 
if I get it, I get it. There's not really a lot I can do. But luckily, I didn't. I didn't get it. And I just, I'm so thankful that I didn't, but I can't believe that I got away with that, you know. Because he was so bad. And, but then, like I say, we, did, we were really careful. We were really careful not to um, be anywhere near each other. And our house at the moment, luckily, we've got the two bedrooms. Um, they're just opposite each other, but we've got huge windows that open right out like doors. So we just kept the whole house ventilated as much as we could. Obviously at night time, we just kept them ajar. We just like, they've got two different ways you can open and close them. I believe they're Polish windows. Um, so through the night, we just kept the windows open, but just slightly so that you can let the air circulate and go out of the window. And then at, in the daytime, we've got some big bifold doors on the back of our kitchen that opens out into the garden. So the house was completely aired all the time. And luckily the weather's been good enough to be able to have done that. So I think that's probably what it was. We were just very, very careful not to be around each other too much. I mean, I was having to take him food and just cover him my, pretty much my whole head. <laughs> Going in to see him with drinks and he was asking for smoothies for his throat and ice cold drinks. But even swallowing was just, oh God, it looked really, honestly, I did feel so bad. And I was so worried as well because I didn't expect him to get hit with it quite as bad as he did. And neither did he. he was, he's a fit person, but I think if you're run down already, as can be the case when autumn comes along and the change of seasons, you need to be really careful to get rest and to look after your body and take some vitamin D and vitamin C and some zinc and several things can help and just eat plenty 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 of fruit and vegetables that's what I was reading I've got this really good book all about fiber it's called fueled by fiber or something like that and it's um there's been, there was a study done about eating meat and not eating meat and the effects of covid and it actually turned out that you know believe this or not but it 40 percent of people who were plant-based and had covid had hang on it wasn't 40 percent of the people the people that had covid that were plant-based eaters had 40 percent less harsh symptoms so I thought that was very interesting. I, so, and funnily enough, Matt hasn't wanted to eat any meat, any dairy, for over a week now. So we've been on these uh, nice veggie soups. So obviously, we've got to get the protein in, but you can do that with pulses and beans. And I'm not getting all preachy about being vegan or vegetarian or anything. It's just for, purely for health reasons. And from the information available and also how... He actually felt about what he was eating so that's we've basically been on a plant-based diet for the last week and a half and actually i feel good for it and um i've been i've had bits of meat but not a lot normally i'd eat like quite a lot because of the gym and i lift weights and things like that so you know you got to get your protein in but i take the easy route and i would use um well, I use vegan protein powders, but I would eat quite a lot of meat to get the proteins in and yogurts and, you know, dairy. But lately I've been more on the pulses and the vegetables and the fruits that are good fibrous fruits. So, yeah, I feel better and I've actually lost more weight doing it that way. Weirdly. It's all very strange, but uh, interesting. So sorry to ramble so much about food intake and COVID, but, you know, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> Um, so that was Owlet's End. So I'll just show you a few bottles stacked together. Look like this. Quite dark looking, isn't it? So these will be available in a few weeks when they've cured. And I'll be back for some more very shortly. So nice to see you and I will see you soon. Ta-ta.